Hey everyone, Senrai Kai here. Today I'm going to check out the fifth episode of Mawadu Penguin Drum. And last episode was pretty exciting because it really felt like we took a, a like a big step forward as far as like really getting the plot rolling. Because we got a big group interaction. We had like a nice little picnic at the park with everyone. And we had Ringo doing her best to fulfill her destiny essentially, right? She has the, the diary, all the important events including the, the first kiss that she got. It was all it was all pretty great. And she kept doing her her daydreams as, as the day went on, which was definitely uh, a big source of amusement, you know. And of course the penguins are always a source of amusement, you know. They they do a lot of weird stuff, going to that one waitress's outfit, you know, trying to use a mirror to get the, the good view. Just they're very crazy little creatures. And I appreciate their existence in the show. But uh yeah, we also got like a death in the show because we had Kuho, I think is her name, and she had like a, a group of people that were had their hearts crushed by a combo of the the playboy over there, right? You know, Kuho shows up and the two girls kind of pop up from behind her, which was, was a pretty fun little scene. You know, the, the divine retribution that she was said to get, but we kind of had that expanded on near the end of the episode because it seems like we had Kuho like getting some like a puppet master sort of thing where she was getting instructions to do that. Somebody that wants to crush somebody combo was the i think the implication but i don't think she actually said that right so i don't want to jump to too many conclusions because sometimes i do that i'll make an initial assumption lock onto it and even if i see subtle evidence that shows that's not true sometimes it just doesn't connect with me a good example is the the diary thing confused me for quite a while because i just assumed it was a it was a diary she, she wrote in right but after you know watching the episode and thinking about it and having someone in the comment section of episode three kind of clarify some stuff yeah i don't think we've ever seen her actually write in the diary it's more like she obtained it somehow and it's like is a the, the impression i get is i see kind of a, a view of the future a view of her destiny and she tr does her best to make it happen which if that's the case that alone is a good source of delving into just what destiny is because that's kind of what the show is about right destiny and di diagnosing it figuring out figuring out what it's all about what it means you know people say they like it people say they don't like it so it's like a big theme of the show you know, with um, Ringo and the, uh, I remember his name, uh, Shoma being like c c c opposites of each other when it comes to Destiny. But yeah, she's definitely trying to use a diary as a guideline and she, you know, stamps it and stuff. And the biggest thing that was the actual, the incident, you know, with the escalator and the, the red heeled girl and all that. So yeah, the diary seems pretty legit in its predictive power. So it'll be pretty, pretty interesting. <clears throat> Sorry, be pretty interesting to see where that goes from here. So. Yeah, let's jump on in and see exactly see exactly how all that goes. So, three, two, one, go. Ah, oh, sick with a fever. I mean, I think it said it was a flashback, but uh, yeah, that's definitely sick with a fever, and this is definitely a flashback. <laughs> How could you do that? Okay, that's what he was thinking. Gotcha. He's like, screw it, I'll do it myself. And man, that's a bad storm. I'm only letting one of my sons go. And you're easier to contain. We could take turns carrying her. Okay, okay. That didn't hit anyone, did it? I can't just cliffhanger me on that. But yeah, there's a couple more things I was going to say in the intro I kind of forgot to. But we got a very brief glimpse of the person that was talking to Kuho about the the planning, you know, the next move and all that. And it was, I'm pretty sure it was not one of the two girls that was with her in the other scene. I'm pretty positive. She was in like a, like an art room sort of thing. And I think she had a school uniform. I think. So, I made sure to get a good look at her at her silhouettes. So if I see her in the show, I should recognize her because I think her hair was a little bit like tw twirly. Uh, I don't know how to describe it, but she looked like quite refined, you know, almost like an Ojo Sama kind of kind of girl. So she could go to Ringo school, maybe. I guess I don't want to jump to too many conclusions, but in fact, I probably should look at the opening and see if any of them looks like that character a little bit late now, but.
Because not, not, not only do you have the person that was on the phone with Kuho, but the person that actually directly pushed her, which... Assuming they're two different people. I assume they were working together, but these are all assumptions. There's so much I don't know. Just the time you made it seem like they were together, but... A show like this would definitely mislead you. <laughs> deliberately. It, it's, it's that kind of show. Yeah, it's a hospital. <laughs> In fact, is that the girl? That might have been. I think that's... I'd see her from behind. His sister is definitely a miracle. <laughs> can you can you please diagnose his hat? <laughs> I the doctor's not gonna take this seriously. Even if he did, I'm sure he's not gonna find anything about the hat. I'm sure it's beyond his ability to. To analyze. Really? <laughs> okay. <laughs> it's like whatever you need to whatever you need to believe. At least he's not being mean about it. But he yeah, definitely doesn't believe him. <laughs> okay, now he's a little bit mean about it. <laughs> oh, uh, I was wondering what you were doing over there. How did you even do that? Yeah, that's totally the same person. It's the same line and everything. I mean, it... It does seem to be, like, not connected, though. Like... Her and the person that pushed her. Uh, getting getting kind of close there. At least she seems okay, though. I mean, I kind of missed my chance to react to that, but I'm glad. Did you see? Who was it? What did he look like? All I know is the character was wearing pants. Oh, that's got a penguin on it. Oh! What the? Uh, is that a slingshot? Okay, maybe it was connected and she's just finishing the job. Jesus. It had like a, a sniper scope light thingy too. And what the heck was that? But yeah, another thing, but I think I'm pretty sure that girl's in the opening. <laughs> I mean, at first I, I thought she was generally, like, worried about her and stuff, but... Selling the house. Oh, uh, the family photos back there. Oh, don't say that. And God, she's adorable. Just the way she's like holding the hat. Be your best, penguin. We could get them a hat. Don't say that. Yeah, he's not just going to let it go. <coughs> there are ways of your motivated. <laughs> I 
Yeah, I'm sure there's a lot that would happen with that. Really interesting art there. But this this is nice. <laughs> that sounds amazing. Oh wow, it's yeah, it's back there. That's that's yeah, really really interesting art. Penguins! There's so many of them. And a Kappa stuffed animal thing. Oh wow, that is a little... I, I want it. <laughs> that sounds like a fun time. And of course got an apple for Ringo. Does, does, doesn't everyone? A lot of nerve to interrupt our meal. Yeah, it's kind of important. Can you call back later? <laughs> Are we? Is that a character we know? Uh, that's not a penguin. Dark cloud above. French cuisine. Again, doesn't everyone? It only was that easy. I mean, it could probably work on me, but... A fabulous Max indeed. Okay. Uh, I guess you didn't account for that. Don't step up! That was such a waste. Oh god, I almost felt that in my soul. And rain again, you know, because it's a sad moment and you gotta have rain and anime and sad moments. Hey, we got an umbrella. You want to share it? <laughs> okay, so we are going to continue that. Yeah, they did kind of leave us leave us on that. Ah, uh, is everyone okay? I didn't, don't think I saw any blood, but ah, uh, definitely hit him. And it's not really your fault. It's the weather's to blame more than anything. Pretty empty. Did that say don't fall into debt? I didn't quite get a chance to read it. Well, that looks kind of sketchy. Uh, I assume that has money in it. Because he did talk earlier about making money and all that. But yeah, it definitely looks sketchy, like drug money kind of sketchy. So does, so does it just do compensate a dating and that's how it gets money? Is, is that why you have so many girlfriends and stuff? Because that, that makes sense. <sighs> Good aim. Yeah, there's no need for that. Curry, you say. I think she did say that. <laughs> I 
about Kamui here. He basically has this cute girly atmosphere all to himself, himself to enjoy. <laughs> yeah, twice for good measure. Double tap. All right, we're going to talk about the diary. Probably the most important plot object in the show. It probably is a Bawaru penguin drum. Just how resilient is that cockroach? Because it's important. My sister's hat wants it. I mean, that makes sense for her to say that. It's a pretty important item. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe a little bit. Because, yeah, he read some of the, some of the stuff. Kimari does not mind in any of this. That's Sir Destiny. Is that better or worse than Amida and Niki? <laughs> It's a, it's a lot to explain, especially since you wouldn't believe a lot of it, but uh, we can try. <laughs> it is so much more than that. She's not going to believe him. <laughs> oh god, oh my god, they counterattacked. Oh, that is like a literal nightmare right there. See so, yeah, how... Yeah, we are pretty much acknowledging that that is the Mario Penguin drum. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's... It's debatable, which is more believable. Okay, okay, is she gonna talk to Ringo? Is Ringo gonna be a part of it? Let's go. I want her sucked into it. Yeah, then let's see who she believes and what she doesn't believe. Welcome to Rock and Roll Night. Welcome to Rock and Roll Fight. I don't think we got this yesterday, so actually for last episode, so it feels good to get it. But yeah, I'm really curious what she's going to say in this scene. Yeah, that we got Ringo here. There she is. Has there been any other anime character that's made like a better, better like, you know, intro like uh, appearance than her? <laughs> yeah, she really is. Just she basically took combos, combos position. Oh damn, <laughs> Misabuta. She really doesn't hold back with anyone. <laughs> yeah, this would be such a shock for her. <laughs> Give it. Give it, you miss a miss a buta. <laughs> Damn. Oh god, this is so good. <laughs> uh <laughs> she spared her. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> Oh, yeah, no, she has to leave on those words. <laughs> I wonder if that's going to dampen their friendship at all. I was wondering what you would say, and I was not ready for it. Uh, oh, my God, she didn't even fall. Jesus. Oh, my God, that sweat. Oh, God. I... I, wow. I'm impressed. Oh my god. Oh my god. I, I can't believe what I just watched. 
I'm, I'm kind of speechless. I'll, I, my eyes are actually watery for some reason. I, what just happened? You, you can't just do all that. And she just did all that. And the hat, uh, and she did not like being, <laughs> being insulted. Uh, yeah, you just killed her sister. Thanks for that. That's that's great. Yeah. Have you seen the hat? It's it's over there. Can you grab it real quick before it goes by? Yeah, we got a mission. <laughs> How much episode do we have left? Not not very much. <laughs> yeah, if we can just stay there for a minute, it'd be great, but it'd be too easy. <coughs> Watch out for any flying glass that might hit you. <laughs> yeah, I like how it says goodbye. Hey, Penguin, you jump up there and get it. You're not doing anything important. That's probably really soggy by now, too. <sighs> oh, God, that is unlucky. <sighs> uh, okay. <laughs> Well, are we just going to break the hat? Hey, the penguin actually is coming through. That's got to hurt. Oh, God, he looks even more painful from this view. But whatever you do, don't let go. Ah, uh, you're, what did I just tell you? <laughs> there you go. I think the last episode was just about having a lovely picnic. We're not making much progress, I gotta say. Gotta hit the camera, guy. Okay, almost left, almost, almost lost it. Is this really the time for a flashback? Man to man promise to achieve his goals, so I will. Take a break from our intense action sequence for this. Yeah, naturally his arm is needed some medical treatment too. I don't think he does. Those socks. Because you threw the hat. Well, this is what your little prank did. It looks like combat came through, though. Jesus. Yeah. I think he deserves another kiss after this. So does the hat still work? Hopefully we didn't break it. It kind of reminds me of a soul gem from Madoka Magica, like, because, you know, I mean, I don't want to spoil the show if you haven't seen it, but, like, away from the body, truck, there's, there's a lot of similarities. You say that. And it's got that penguin symbol too that we saw in the thingy earlier. So it's all connected. But how is this all connected? That's the question. Because he didn't, I don't think they ever clarified how he's making that money. But Kama definitely has some connection to the one girl that probably killed Kuho. But like, it didn't seem to be. 
I'm just I'm so confused on so many things. Uh, because because it almost seems like, you know, he got the money from her, but that that doesn't make sense. I, I don't know. I don't know what I know. But I'm pretty sure it was the same penguin symbol. I know penguin in general is a big theme of the show, so maybe I shouldn't read too much into that, but she always connected a combo in some way. But she was when I was instructing Kuho to you know, mess with him. I, I still don't know to what end, though. Future. I think that, you know, that, that, that diary could have been called Mirai Nikki, so it would have made sense because it's still predicting the future, more or less. So, anything left, or...? <laughs> just got his... just got his ice cream stolen. She's stealing on the penguins. Wow, what a privilege that must be. <clears throat> okay. Okay. Well, that was the fifth episode of Moharu Penguin Drum. Uh, man, that was a lot to digest. Uh, give me, give me a second. <sighs> okay, so where do I start with this episode? I mean, first of all, it was a great episode. Let's just get that out of the way right now. Because uh, we had a lot of flashbacks. Like, the whole... Flashback of Himari being sick, having to go to the hospital. That was kind of inter, inter, intermittent, inter, dispersed throughout the episode, right? So, obviously important because that seemed to be like a big driving force and kind of Kanba's motivation, you know, the promise between men with the father and all that. Clearly had a big impact on him, his attitude going forward, you know, and protecting Himari and all that good stuff. So, it was definitely important to get into that because that really was showcased on the intense rain bike riding, right? Because it was pretty much Himari's life that was hanging up by a thread, being whooshed away. And if he didn't go out there and get it, it would have just been lost. So he had to just, he had to do it. There was no waiting for the storm to pass. He just he had to do it or lose pretty much the most important person to him. So it was great to see that. But anyway, back to the beginning of the episode. Uh, <laughs> we had Shoma being like, Dr. Hat. Hat saved sister. You want to take a good look at it? It's got like an extraterrestrial origin or something. I don't quite get it, but maybe you maybe you will. Just grab your stethoscope and tell me what you what you find out. But the doctor didn't really believe much of much of that, right? He's just like, you know, this is, I guess it's a coping me coping mechanism or something. You know, whatever. Have fun, kid. Laugh, make your sister laugh. It's it's all good, <laughs> right? It's a little bit dismissive, but I do want to go back to the part with the hospital room visit because I feel like that's definitely important to come through in detail. Also, the penguin somehow got stuck in the device thingy, you know, drooling all over the place, sweating. Yeah, because you had that line again. Gosh, I must crush her soon. I feel like the word her wasn't in the translation last time. I think it was kept more vague than that, but still, who was she referring to here? Because you said that loud enough for Kuho to hear it, right? But, like, but who, who was she referring to, though? I mean, now that I actually know, not, I mean, actually now that I see that she said her, which I didn't pick up on before, because uh, as I heard the line, I was just thinking of the previous line, so that was the actual line that popped in my head, if that makes any sense at all, but now that I see the word her, it's got to be referring to the hat, right? Like, I guess that may be the enemy rivalry we're setting up here. Like, if the hat is our ally, like our faction, then I guess she's with the opposing faction, I, I guess. I mean, that's, that's, that's a bit of a stretch. But, anyway, she's here. She's like, you must be terribly worried about your job right now. She says, it's my fault. It all happened because I asked too much of you, and that's got to be referring to, you know, the combo stuff, right? So, like, in this, cause in this scene, she seemed to be sympathetic towards her, so I was like, maybe I was... Jumping to conclusions to think the person that pushed her could be connected to her. It could have just been coincidental, right? I was starting to lean towards that way of thinking around around that point. You know. And then we started to get some physical intimacy here with some cheek 
cheek touching and stuff. You know, and she says, I can't forgive whoever did this to you. Which really made me think that I was off base with my assumption. But it seemed to be like fake, I guess. Because she asks how much she knows. Yeah, I thought I saw someone right right before the accident. I remember it now, and we see a flower like wilt the second she says that, which is clearly symbolic. And then she says that she saw. So, yeah, I think maybe the idea was initially going to let her live, but once she found out that she saw something, she couldn't. But, but even that wouldn't really make sense, though, because, like... Because if she shot her here to kill her, which I'm pretty sure is what happened, then she would have been the one that tried to have her killed before. So either way, she'd want her dead, right? So I feel like I'm missing something. But yeah, she just appearance-wise, she came in there just to finish the job after a failed initial killing attempt. Because, you know, the first attempt was meant to look like an accident as much as you can. You know, there's a random push. Because sometimes people can fall or whatever. And if you ever, if you have to have more personal touch of like sniping them, you know, in their own hospital room, at that point it's clearly not an accident. So obviously that sort of thing is a last resort. But we didn't really have any follow up on that either. So I don't know what will. And we had a, we had a news thing here, which I don't think I really. Yeah, because they talk about the Kuho thing on TV. Update on Asami Kuho who fell down a subway escalator a few days ago. According to the latest report, Kuho, Kuho has told the police she doesn't remember anything before or after the incidents. The police is continuing their investigation by searching for witnesses. Okay, so... Is my takeaway from that supposed to be that she wasn't killed, but had her memories erased instead? Because it looked like she, you know, got murdered in that hospital room, but this is a weird show, so it could just be a memory wipey device. Because it didn't say anything about her being dead, right? So the only assumption I can make from that is that she just had a memory wiped and isn't actually dead, I guess. I really should stop, like, not paying pay attention to TV news stuff, because they usually have a point in anime. <laughs> Even though I just instinctively drown, you know, white noise them in my head. But, so that was some pretty important stuff. <clears throat> we had a little bit of stuff with Ringo's family, the, the father. I don't really have too much to say about that, really. Let's see, what else do we have to say in the episode? In the first, I don't think I have much more to say about the first half, really. Because we had Ringo come over, which is, you know, that led to some exciting stuff. Yeah, because we basically, we wanted her to give us the diary because it's important. It's probably, most definitely the, the Penguin Gem at this point. I think everyone's made it clear at this point. Which surprised me that ended up being a physical thing because I didn't think it would be, but... You know, it all makes sense. Like, clearly it's very heavily tied to the concept of fate, which is a big thing in the show, so... It's all good. But, yeah, she didn't seem to believe that the hat was magic. Nobody, nobody ever does. It's quite tragic, but... Yeah, then she put on the hat and then we got sucked into the... The um, penguin hat dimension, I guess I'll call it, right? And this is where things got excited. I mean, I was already excited at the notion of actually pulling Ringo in there. I mean, because for one thing, she can't deny that there's something supernatural going on here if, you, if, you, if, you're, if you're in that, right? <clears throat> Unless you think you're going crazy or something. <clears throat> but I also like how she essentially took Kamba's spot, like, because it's... You know, because we can't—we don't have room for three people. So luckily, Combo wasn't there, so she could, she could fill the spot, right? And she was initially pretty, obviously, pretty shocked by this. And we already knew that the hat is pretty, pretty rude. You know, likes likes insults and stuff. But man, she really went hard on him on on um, <clears throat> on um, Ringo, right? Because I mean, maybe just got used to the usual words she says in regards to the the brothers. But man, she was just. She's just savage beyond words, like stalker slut, like just the sheer, <laughs> the sheer amount of words that she used to describe to describe her, and a lot of them were accurate. You know, she definitely is a stalker, crazy, you know, girl, right? She even like spit at her too. Oh Jesus, I have such insolence. How dare you talk back to me? I swear I could just watch it. Uh, you rotten puke-brained bitch ass whore. 
Uh, and it's not just a transition thing. Like, I listen to the Japanese. That's more or less what she said. <laughs> like, she just went after her. And that was already a pretty entertaining already, right? <laughs> you know? I was already... I would have been pretty sad if it was the season... The, the scene overall, if that was all that happened. And she got the, the falling in the hole treatment, right? <laughs> and I, I really thought that was the end of it. That maybe we have a couple, couple of quick words to show him and then we would, like, cancel out of it, go back to the room, and Ringo would be like, oh, wow, I, I'm sorry I doubted you, Shoma. Clearly there's something going on with that hat. Um, so, yeah, let's let's start discussing how to move forward with this, right? Like, I thought that's where it was going, you know? Because I watch a lot of shows. Usually I kind of have an idea of how scenes will progress, you know, more or less. And then... And that was pretty much how that was, but the scene kept going, and she gives him instructions to snatch the diary, because that's the important thing, right? And then we get like a quick little bit of surprise from her, and then we shift the camera back over to the hole where where Ringo did not fall. We go back over here, though there are the penguins there, of course he is. We see just a couple of hands there, you know, the handcuffs still on, so this girl who was dropped by dropped into a trap door that she didn't know was there, right? So she had little didn't really have any extra time to prepare for it, you know, the way the brothers do. Like they, they know it's there. She didn't. So she had that surprise. She had the cuffs on and still managed to avoid flying through. That's honestly really impressive. And just the animation's good too, just like swinging her legs back up there. And of course we got the money shot, you know, PV POV camera angle there, right to the legs. We didn't get a, you know, a Ponsu shot, which I feel like we should have, all things considered. But, oh well, you know. But she got up, you know, like a champ. At this point, I was already pretty surprised, pretty shocked. And, like, I never really had a chance to recover from the shock because every time something shocking happened, they just kept adding to it. Like, first, you know, she doesn't fall through the hole. She gets back up. Already pretty pretty shocking because it's already a big, uh, what's what I'm looking for? Contrary to your expectations of how the scene's supposed to go, right? You know, so it was already it was already that, and then we, and then we see her just freaking Hulk smash it. I didn't know she was that physically strong for one thing. So yeah, and that I didn't even have a chance to feel the shock of that before she just sprints up the stairs like she's a professional athlete runner. Like it was like super 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 fast. You know, because usually we see like uh, him, you know, him already like walking slowly down the stairs. So seeing someone run quickly up the stairs was already pretty interesting in that regard. But she just like booked it, you know, almost got some kill, like, kill, kill, like, kill flashbacks through some of that. But yeah, she goes up there, just <laughs> yoinks the hat, throws it in the road, and then the truck takes it. And that was the scene. That was that was how that went, you know. Like, I don't get rendered speeches very often, but that, that overall scene did it. Like, I was just blown away by the sheer strength of will and audacity of this girl. Just to do all of that in that crazy situation, you know. Because most people would be pretty intimidated, pretty freaked out, pretty in shock to really do much of anything, really. And yet, Ringo managed all of that. I can't say I'm not super impressed. She may be a, you know, freaky, stalker, crazy girl... But she, she's, you don't underestimate her, right? I think she said as much in the scene, but yeah, I think I learned my lesson on that regard. But, you know, she also needed to learn a lesson that that hat was very important. You don't just take it and throw it. Like, that literally killed her, pretty much. So, if it wasn't for combo, we could, we, the show would, take, would have pretty much lost Himari there, I think. So, and kind of lost its purpose, because, you know, they're doing all this to save Himari, you know, do the bidding of the, of the hat and all that, so... Can't really get rid of that. Really important not to do that. So. And that was, yeah, pretty much the episode. Uh, did we even get a name for the girl that that went into went into Kuho's room? I don't think we did. I'll double check. I don't think we got her name yet. So. So I know what her deal is. There's so much I don't know. Like, what she wanted from Kuo, Kuo to begin with, why things went the way they did. Because I guess she didn't kill her. I'm, I'm operating under the assumption that she didn't die there, that she got her memory wiped with some special device. That's the theory, that's the assumption I'm, I'm going with. That's the impression I got from the news, the news report. Because what she said in the room contradicted what they said there about not remembering anything. And they didn't say she died, so. That's pretty much the only assumption I can go with at this point. 
Kamba makes money in some illegitimate way, or he makes the money some way, that seems to be maybe connected to our curly-haired girl, but, you know, who knows exactly what the truth of that is. And the person that she wants to crush is most likely the hat, I guess. Otherwise, I don't know. Nobody else really makes sense, really. So I'm going to assume she's some kind of antagonistic force against the hat. That's that's my that's my theory. But anyway, this video's already gone, gone on way too long. I don't even know how long I've been recording. So I'm going to end it off here. There, just, there was a lot that I wanted to dive in on this episode, so I, I guess I kind of did, but... Yeah, really good stuff. Very. The show is never boring. The show definitely keeps rolling. It keeps you on your toes. Never sure what you expect. <laughs> like in a million years, or not, I would not have guessed how that penguin, penguin stairs session would have would have went. Not, not never. So, yeah, really good stuff. I hope you enjoyed my reaction to the episode, and I hope to see you in the next video. Until then, bye bye.